Yemen's Houthi-backed foreign minister might have a lot to answer for. In a moment, he'll join me on the program to defend his self-proclaimed government against accusations by Human Rights Watch. The aid group says the Houthis' widespread use of mines in farms, villages, wells and public roads have killed dozens of civilians. And that was just last year. Human Rights Watch says those mines have also prevented people from harvesting crops in a time of famine and have blocked humanitarian organizations from delivering medical aid at a time when cholera is rampant. Well, joining me now from Sana'a is the Foreign Minister of the Houthis National Salvation Government in Yemen, Hisham Sharaf Abdullah, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Human Rights Watch came out with a report. I'm sure you're aware of it. They say you lay landmines and kill civilians under your control. They say you block aid that could help stop starvation. You're blocking it. And you want the world to recognize you as a government, but this is how you govern. What's your response to what Human Rights Watch has said? Uh, my response is very clear. Uh, if we are putting some mines in certain areas to defend ourselves from the attacks of the militias that are part of the aggression, we do it against military forces, not against civilians. We are not fighting our population. So again, human rights should know where these things are and how the other side is dealing with us. So we are in a defensive position, not in some kind of an aggressive position. This is one. The, the two, who said we are blocking aid? Let them come to Sana'a, let them come to Hudaydah and see who is blocking okay, aid. Okay, so we let me just quote them. Okay, let me quote them directly. It, let me quote them directly then, sir, and sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Houthi-laid landmines have not only killed and yes. maimed numerous civilians, but they have prevented vulnerable Yemenis from harvesting crops and drawing clean water desperately needed for survival. Mines have also prevented aid groups from bringing food no. and health care to increasingly hungry and ill Yemeni civilians. They have killed at least 140 civilians, including 19 children, in the flashpoint governance of Hodeida and Ta'iz alone. They say your mines are in farmlands, villages, wells and roads. You've killed more than 140 civilians, according to Human Rights Watch. They're right, aren't they? These are general... Oh, no, sorry, I mean, to interrupt you also. These are generalized statements. Human Rights Watch should come to us and visit those areas, not only depend on the reports of the other side, who is pro-Saudi. We are not killing our people. We are defending ourselves and using some minds to defend our positions. We are not going to let them run over us and do whatever they want. Now, about the assistance, I can tell the world from here, we are not blocking aid from our citizens, from our people in Yemen. Maybe some procedures or some bureaucratic uh, arrangements made something difficult, but we are ready to solve it as the national salvation government mm -hmm. of the Republic of Yemen. Okay, so let's forget Human Rights Watch for a second and quote the World Food Program. They say you block them from a grain yes. storage, the Red Sea Mills, that is needed to serve and feed about four million people. People are starving to death in Yemen, and they're saying the Houthis are telling them, sorry, you can't come to the grain storage and you can't distribute that food to people. So Human Rights Watch aside, World Food Program, are they also lying? Yes, I met the Director General in the region of the World Food Program yesterday. In fact, they are not, or they were not very, uh, I'll say, very well coated in this about us. There is a place of war, a place of battles between two sides, and that mill is in the middle. Sometimes, because of the different clashes happening, it happens at the time when they want to come to the, that mill, such things happen, but we are not preventing them. The World Food Program, I told them yesterday, we can take them there, but they know that they cannot make sure of the two sides, not our side. So the problem is mutual, not from the National Salvation Government side, it is from both sides, the other side and us. And sometimes they try the militia, which are pro-Hadi or pro the aggression coalition, they try to make it look like as if we are the ones who cannot, uh, who does not want to make them come to that mill. And again, 
why they make a big fuss about that mill? Well, big quantities are coming to because, Yemen. Because but it feeds again, they 4 million people. Certainly. Make some, sorry, no, but again, again, please. They have hundreds of thousands of tons of grains coming to Yemen, and this is only a small part of it, and we acknowledge that it will feed a segment, a big segment of our population. So again, the WFP should make arrangements with the other side who is causing these problems, not us. You have long-range missiles that your leadership has said is trained on Riyadh and Abu Dhabi and other Gulf capitals if the ceasefire fails. Is that what you're going to do? Is that... What, what would constitute the ceasefire failing for you to launch those long-range missiles? Uh, let, let me tell you something that we have declared a long time ago, not just the last two days. We asked our brothers, the Saudis and the Emiratis and the others, to stop, like, the bombing of our cities. And from our sides, we will take the same uh, step. So you cannot make peace talks while the planes are right. attacking our cities and our troops. So, again, we are asking them, stop your killing in our country and we will stop sending these rockets or these right. missiles to your country. Again, this is a very, very crucial point the world should know. We cannot just talk and have some kind of negotiations with the Saudis and their allies. And at the same time, they are bombing us. Okay. They have to know this. Okay. this is we war. will have retaliation. Sure. We will have retaliation. Okay. We will retaliate if anything happens to us. And this is a message clear to them. OK, but in order to reach Riyadh, in order to reach Dubai, in order to reach Abu Dhabi, you need long-range missiles. Where are you getting the missiles from? Uh, I mean, I will leave this to military analysts to tell you, I mean, uh, how they can use these missiles. But again, uh, I have said it in Are you getting it from Tehran? with CNN and BBC. No, 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 we have it. Yemen is a country that has united, I mean, Republic of Yemen, in 1990. The guys in the south had a big stock of missiles and other weapons. The guys in the north had the same. Two countries united, the same country, I mean, brothers, and we have a big stock are you of getting the missiles weapons, from Tehran? Including missiles. No, no, no. A long way from Tehran to here. And I can uh, confirm to you that we are not getting any missiles from Tehran, regardless of all the accusations of the Americans and their allies. Are you getting any weapons from Tehran? No. And I can tell all the world that I called the... Unfortunately, we seem to have lost the connection there with Hisham Sharaf Abdullah in Sana'a. It's a real pity that we've uh, experienced this technical problem. So I'm going to move on for now, but we'd like to invite the foreign minister back onto the program next week to finish our conversation.